Hey, it's Chris with uh, Beer Town Austin. I'm at 512 Brewing Company here for the open house. It's Halloween, trick or treat. Uh, we're trying the Bruin. I'm here with Nate. Uh, Nate actually made the Bruin. So Nate, you want to tell me about it? Um, sure. It's a. Uh, it's basically our fall, our fall seasonal. Um, it's, it's actually sort of based on an old homebrew recipe of mine that was sort of an accident. Um, I was, uh, in, in my early days of homebrewing, I was trying to make a brown ale and just calculated some things wrong and ended up brewing something about twice as, as strong as it was supposed to be and liked it and kept on brewing that. So when we were coming up with a fall seasonal, um, uh, it seemed like that style just sort of fit with what we wanted to do. Um, it's, uh, like I say, it's a, it's, it's, it's a double brown. It's uh, stronger than your average brown ale. I always... Uh, I, I, I sort of really love brown ales, and I think they're sort of um, sort of a, an understated beer style, I guess. You know, uh, they, they're sort of a uh, they're sort of a comfort food beer style for me, I guess. And people don't typically, you know, in this uh, sort of day and age of extreme beers and people wanting double, you know, IPAs and imperial this and imperial that. People don't really uh, people sort of overlook uh, brown ales, I guess. But um, you know, I think I, I think this sort of uh, uh, fits maybe where uh, people's heads are right right now. Uh, but still, you know, sort of pays tribute to a style that's sort of sometimes overlooked. But um, it's about seven and three quarters percent alcohol or so, uh, a little less than eight percent alcohol. Um, and we used a uh, pretty high proportion of Munich, Munich malt in that, in addition to our regular, uh, it's organic Munich malt, in addition to our organic uh, two row okay. malt, um, which we normally use as the base malt on nearly everything and a, a fair amount of chocolate and crystal malt to give it those roasty sort of chocolatey, uh, you know, uh, toasted malt sort of flavors and stuff like that. And a little bit of molasses, uh, okay. fairly small proportion of molasses in there, but I think it's just enough to give it sort of a little bit of a tang, I guess. Um, and then um, use Fuggles hops uh, uh, for bittering and then dry hopped it actually with Fuggles as well. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's got a good hop presence. I can cool. taste that in it. Cool, thanks. Um, so there's that. Yeah, that should be, you know, we'll have that through, uh, you know, probably uh, sometime mid-December or so, and then we'll be moving, our, onto our, moving on to our next seasonal okay. after that. Cool. Um, what's, uh, I guess, the background with the name? The Bruin? Um, we, uh, we just, Kevin and I uh, just sort of had a, a brainstorming session one day and wanted to come up with, uh, you know, some things like the name and, 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 and that sort of thing with the tap handles. and that kind of thing would look like uh, for our next season. We had already figured out we wanted to do this double brown thing. And it just it so, sort of came from that, uh, that brainstorming session. Um, I had uh, sort of this, uh, basically the idea behind Bruin is Bruin is sort of an archaic word meaning bear, um, but it also uh, is, is a word that means brown. And in, in some you know, European languages, the word Bruin actually means brown. So it sort of has that double meaning, bear and brown. It was a brown ale. Uh, it's a strong brown ale, so I think you know the bear implication sort of has this. Like, uh, rawr. Yeah, there, there's sort of this, uh, sort of a hint of ferociousness or yeah. something like that. So it, it, it makes it seem like uh, you know bigger than just an ordinary brown, I yeah. guess. So that's kind of where all that came from. Don't don't sneak um, up on it when the with the cubs. It'll yeah, it'll tear your face off. When when I was a kid, my parents were in a softball team called the Bruins, also. Oh, okay. so. <laughs> But that's yeah, that's a coincidence. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, cool. cheers, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good beer. I don't have one in my hand, but yeah. cool. Thank you. In the future, rain check cheers. Yeah, rain uh, check cheers. There you go. Right. Uh, so, what's the deal with the? Oh, hey, look at these barrels. Yeah. What's, what's going on with these? Um, well, these are Jack Daniels barrels that uh, we 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 got used from Jack Daniels. Uh, I guess the, the way they operate is they'll they'll use new oak barrels. Uh, they age their whiskey in it for three years, I believe, and then they never use them again. They okay. they they sell all their used barrels immediately after the first time that they're used. Um, so we got these uh, from them. Uh, they were used to to age Jack Daniel's whiskey and bourbon in, and um, uh, basically what we've got going in it right now is going to be our winter seasonal to come out sometime around Christmas Hanukkah time. Yeah, um, it's uh, going to be a double. To Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa as well. right, Festivus. Yeah. Um, it's going to be uh, basically a double version of the pecan porter. It's uh, around 10% alcohol when it went into these barrels. Um, I think it'll pick up a little bit more alcohol, uh, both from evaporation inside of the barrel and also uh, by absorbing some of the whiskey that's yeah. still left in the in the barrels. When when we first opened these things, and sort of a gust of uh, of the, the the air that was inside came out, we just got these huge. Uh, whiffs of really good smelling, you know, oh, wow. whiskey, and uh, so you know, I'm, I'm hoping some of that oak and some of that whiskey uh, translates over into the final beer. Um, 
this is the first time we've ever done this, so we're kind of you know we're, we're kind of throwing caution to, uh, to the wind and yeah, yeah. and just going for it. But we'll see how it turns out. Um, but we have high hopes. I think it'll be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it should should come out somewhere in the ten and a half percent range, I'd say. And uh, you know, the pecan porter has been such a success for us that we thought that that would be a cool thing to do is take that one and sort of pre present an, another face of that beer. Okay. So. Cool. So this come out, I guess, uh, winter time. Yeah, or so. Okay. Begin beginning of winter or so. Okay. Around, around the solstice. Okay, cool. It'll be our solstice beer. All right. Well, yeah, it's Nate Seal. Seal or Seal? Seal. Seal. Yeah. yeah. The 512 Brewing. We're at the open house and trying the brewing and talking about some barrels. So, um, yeah, go out and try it. Thanks, everybody. See ya.